My name is Tim Smythe and I am the science leader for the Western Channel Observatory here in Plymouth. What is the Western Channel Observatory? Well really it's a, a series of stations that are in the, in, in, in the Western English Channel. There's one that's uh, about seven nautical miles from Plymouth called Station L4 and there's also one that's 20 miles off, offshore of Plymouth uh, called Station E1 and that's really why we're here today is to launch this, this data buoy uh, that we've had built in collaboration with the UK Met Office to take high frequency measurements um, at Station E1. Why do we need to bother taking high frequency measurements at these stations? Well it actually enables us to capture a lot of the um, events that we would otherwise miss uh, taking the measurements in a more traditional way. Prior to this we've been taking measurements with our research vessel from Plymouth so usually in the summer months we can get out to Station E1 probably once a fortnight um, just taking single measurements then of temperature and salinity and that kind of thing. What we can do with this boy is that we can take measurements every hour um, of the meteorological conditions, of the conditions in the water and then what we're doing with this boy is that we can send them uh, via satellite uh, communications back to PML um, in real time so that we can immediately display the data on the web and this immediacy is something that's very powerful within the Western Channel Observatory. It makes it much more accessible to the public for example so they can see what the conditions are in the Western Channel. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, today with this buoy. My name's Fishwick, I uh, work at Plymouth Marine Laboratory and I'm the operational manager of the Western Channel Observatory as well as being the project manager of the Autonomous Boy Project. We're here today to deploy one of our second boys which is a collaboration between the UK Met Office and Plymouth Marine Laboratory. This boy is going to go in our furthest offshore station some 20 miles south of Plymouth and as you can see behind me we have an, an array of meteorological parameters on the, on the top of the buoy, on the top ring. Those are measuring things like wind speed, direction, atmospheric pressure, temperature, humidity. And as well as that, we also have the antennas for the satellite transmissions. You can see today we're in a sheltered area in Plymouth Sound and the buoy is already quite a lively situation. And you imagine now when it's out 20 miles offshore and these buoys are out um, 12 months of the year so they undergo quite severe weather and uh, part of that is to try and make the buoy and the instrumentation robust enough to persevere through those storm events. So a lot of thought goes into the mounting of those sensors, the cabling, but also as part of this collaboration we're responsible for the water sensors and our sensors go down the central moon pool within the buoy and they're measuring things like the water temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen, um, chlorophyll fluorescence, turbidity, coloured dissolved organic material and also nutrients in the form of nitrate. Now whilst the sensors on the top are exposed to the, uh, the winds and the waves, the sensors underneath are also exposed to a lot of movement so they also have to be robust and solid. But not only that, in the water they're faced with the problem of fouling, of growth, marine growth on those uh, sensors. So that poses another issue for us. And part of that is um, we have copper tape to keep things from growing on them, but also with quite a sophisticated series of shuttering systems and wiper systems, as well as um, bleach injection, so that bleach is injected into the, the flow cells to keep the cells clear. Now all these things work together and these these sensors measure every hour and they're reliable and we send data back to the lab by a satellite transmission and that data is used to validate models looking at the environment and the ecosystem in the water but also the Met, the Met Office use that data to drive the weather forecasting as well as the waves and the, the sea states because also as part of this boy we have a wave direction and height measurements. And that data as I say, is used in modelling but also we use it within the remote sensing group of PML to look at the comparison between what is being measured in, the, in situ in the water and what the satellites are retrieving from space.